What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is good to see you if you've been here before and if this is your first time here, it is nice to meet you. My name is Dr. Brandon Osborne. I'm the director of training here at Momentum Wad. I'm a Strong First certified kettlebell instructor and a doctor of chiropractic. Today, what we are going to be doing is similar but slightly different than what we've done in weeks past. If you've tuned in before, you know that we've been looking at some of your favorite mixed martial arts and combat sports superstars looking at their strength training routines, letting you know what we like, what we don't like, and what you can take to utilize in your own routine at home to better what you're doing and improve your performance. Today, yes, we are going to be doing those things, but we are looking at something different. We are looking at five different athletes and they are performing some unusual, some weird, some unconventional exercises. Make sure you stick around till the end because I am going to show you what I think is the weirdest exercise I have ever seen a professional athlete or anybody performing for that matter. So without further ado, let's get started. The first athlete we will be looking at today is none other than the former UFC bantamweight champion, Cody No Love Garbrandt. So this whole routine of Cody's is all of 45 seconds. So we're gonna stick around for the whole thing. Uh, we're in this outdoor training space. We've got graffiti on the walls. It's pretty cool. The beautiful thing about training with minimal equipment, one of the many beautiful things, is that you can do it just about anywhere. You can take the equipment with you, you can hit the, the beach, you can go outside, and you can train uh, in the great outdoors, which is one of the things that I love personally about kettlebell training. So we're looking at this space, and Cody is starting his unconventional kettlebell exercise, which he is utilizing two kettlebells for. He has one overhead, and one at his waist in what we call a suitcase position. And he's performing farmer's carries, but it's a waiter's walk and a regular farmer's carry combined into one exercise. Uh, this is an awesome way to develop your performance, to develop your core endurance and strength, your grip strength, your postural muscles, your metabolic endurance, even though it might not seem like this exercise will do that. It will if you do it long enough. Uh, he is doing so much all at once with one exercise, which I am a huge fan of. I like the fact that he's performing this exercise in an asymmetrical fashion. When I do this exercise, I like to do it with one kettlebell uh, where I will load it up on one side of the body really heavy to challenge the opposite side of the body to stabilize. Or if I do it with two kettlebells, I will do, that, do it with different weights. Uh, to create a similar effect while loading my central nervous system with more input. Uh, I'm going to read a quote to you because I like this exercise so much. Uh, somebody by the name of Dr. Stuart McGill, who you may or may not have heard of, who is considered the spine biomechanics and performance expert everywhere. He's, he's the guy when it comes to this sort of thing. This is what he says about the exercise that Cody is performing. He notes... Asymmetric carries challenge the contralateral quadratus lumborum and abdominal wall, leading to a rigid core, uh, which will help you to transmit power during athletic feats, such as when changing direction. So doing something like this is going to have significant implications for your power and your ability to do things like change direction, whether that is lunging for a takedown or sweeping somebody when uh, they're in your guard Doing these things, while they might not seem like they're related to your performance endeavors, they actually have significant implications for your performance. So thumbs up to this exercise. And this is one that I include in my routines. We include at Momentum Wad, and I would encourage you to include as well. Finishing things out here, we got some ball throws against the wall, doing a little TRX work. Closing things out with Cody. Next, we are moving on to, suspense is killing me. We got Michael Chandler, new UFC superstar, former Bellator uh, champion. And he is doing what we call a kettlebell complex. He's performing a series of kettlebell exercises that are chained together to form one movement. Uh, and the movements he is utilizing specifically are the double row, to dead clean to the rear open lunge. Uh, this 
complex is not for beginners. So it's a series of movements that you would perform only after mastering each individual movement. But this is one of the cool things about training with kettlebells as well, is that you can smoothly transition from one exercise to the next and create one big sequence out of one piece of equipment. So as we're watching Michael work through this sequence, we can see double row grip strength, pulling power, front rack clean, ballistic movement that's going to develop posterior chain power, core endurance, grip strength, and then we're moving into a rear open lunge, which is a very challenging exercise, uh, which is going to facilitate hip mobility. And it's also gonna work your gluteal muscles and your posterior chain when you're returning back to that standing position. Uh, as we've seen in videos past, Michael, uh, his clean form could use some cleaning up. He's uh, slamming that bell on his forearm. So I would encourage him to keep that bell a little bit closer to his body or slow the movement down. Maybe he knows the technique, but he's just moving quickly to try to uh, stick with the tempo that the video is being shot. So maybe slow it down a little bit. But this is, this is one of the cool things about kettlebell training that you can do at home where you combine exercises together to create a full body movement that is both functional and performance oriented. Our next exercise, who are we moving on to? Looks like we had the UFC flyweight champion, the first Mexican champion of UFC, uh, Brandon Moreno, who, if you watched his, his performance against Davison Figueroa, Figueroa uh, that was hard not to be inspired by that. That was, got you right there. So we have a, we're starting on the ground, we've got like a shin box position, moving to a tall kneeling position and then transitioning to a stand from there. So this is, first and foremost, this is very difficult to do. He's making it look easy, but if you just try to stand from the floor without using your hands, that's already something that requires some skill. And then once you add weight to it, uh, it makes it even more difficult. So I have one concern with this, well, two concerns with this exercise. First is the difficulty level. I would say this is not for everybody. Uh, if you can't get off the ground without using your hands, you're not gonna be able to do it using weight. So that's first and foremost. Second is when transitioning from uh, the position where he's on his butt to a tall kneeling position, I think there's a moment there where the low back could be put at risk, where it's being put into flexion a little bit and there's the potential for injury doing this exercise in this fashion. So I would do one of two different things. I would either perform a Turkish getup where you're going to get very similar uh, benefits out of the movement. I would say, I would argue even more benefit out of the movement uh, and doing it in a safer, more biomechanically correct way. Or, as opposed to what he's doing here, I would do what we call a shin box kneeling press, where you're gonna work that hip external rotation. You're going to work the posterior chain as you're transitioning from that uh, ground position to a tall kneeling position. And you'd work pressing power as well, um, once again, in a way that is slightly less risky and uh, a slightly better fit for more people as a whole. But I don't hate this movement. I, I just think there's, there's room for a little bit of improvement here, but it's, it's very functional. You know, you're working from a lying to a standing position, which if you're a mixed martial artist is very relevant, um, unless you never get taken down. In that case, it's not relevant at all. So the next exercise we're going into, we've got, the former UFC interim lightweight champion, and potentially uh, after this weekend, the new UFC lightweight champion, Dustin Poirier, performing an exercise I have never seen before. So there's a lot going on uh, with this movement. I like it. I like the tempo it's being performed. I like uh, the functionality of it because I think it's very specific for a martial artist or somebody who has a lot of rotational movement in their athletic endeavor. So let's start from the top. We've got Dustin, he's in a hinged position. He's rotating, pressing the kettlebell away from his body, all while in a staggered stance, 
and maintaining proper biomechanics as he's doing so. So Phil's doing a great job here in making sure that Dustin is tuning into all the little details. So he's, he's doing as a good trainer should, uh, making sure that knee is not going into a valgus position, making sure that his spine is neutral, all of those little things that make an exercise not only more effective, but safe for you to perform. So as we're working through this, hip hinging. So we got posterior chain involved. We got pressing power. We got core endurance. I would imagine that uh, Dustin's core is working hard as he is working through this movement. Shoulder stability, his lats are engaged, working on not only maintaining that stability as he's pressing out, but pulling back in. Uh, his knees are getting worked here in terms of developing stability. There is a ton going on here. I think there's a lot to like about this exercise. I've never seen it before. I've never done it before. But I think as a combat sports athlete, there is a lot of benefit to performing something like that. And as you can see, Dustin was not using a lot of weight for that exercise, which you would not need to do either. It would be a very lightweight movement, more of a, an accessory exercise to develop uh, stability to prevent injury than it would be something to develop power and strength. So the last person we have in today's video is, this is personally my favorite one. This is Paulo Costa uh, performing a very unconventional kettlebell exercise. So, so if you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen this uh, video of Paulo performing this kettlebell exercise before, but if you, if you don't, uh, there's a link in the description below, so feel free to do that. Uh, but Paulo is going into a double kettlebell press while bridging with his hips while having, whether it's his training partner or his coach, uh, pretty much laying on top of him. So first and foremost, if you're training by yourself, you would not have the ability to do this in the way that Paulo, Paulo is doing so. Second, I think... Performing kettlebell presses from the floor uh, is a that's a great exercise. It's a great way to develop pressing power, uh, isometric strength if you're doing an iso press. The hip bridging makes sense from a mixed martial arts and a jiu-jitsu perspective in terms of a skill that is relevant to your performance. However, there is something to be said uh, for the aesthetics of watching this being performed, and there is something to be said for safety. Okay. Let's imagine that his friend slips. What is going to happen to Paulo having two, you know, 55 to 75 pound kettlebells over his head if somebody falls on top of him while he's doing that? This is not smart, this is not safe. Get rid of the guy on top of him when doing this exercise. You could band his hips down while doing this exercise, which would provide a similar benefit without the risk this is not a good idea. I would not recommend you do this one at home. It's entertaining to watch though, for sure. So now we're doing just like an ISO hold in that bridge position. And this next exercise is not a kettlebell exercise, but I included it for uh, similar reasons to that past exercise. You know, let's just train smart. Let's not you can, you can train hard and smart at the same time. This is an invitation to hurt his back, to hurt his knees. I don't even know what to say. It's kind of on brand for Paulo because he's, he's almost looked at as like the juggernaut. You know, he just like puts his head down and runs through things. But, you know, you're a professional athlete. You have too much on the line, even as an amateur athlete. You know, you don't want to be out of competition with, you know, a knee injury or a rib injury for a minimum of six weeks. We don't want that to happen. So let's train smart and hard at the same time and use our heads and our bodies to create the best strength training routine that we can to better your performance as quickly as possible while not putting ourselves at risk for injury. So I think that's the moral of watching that clip there with Paulo Costa. So. That does it for our five unconventional, weird, unique kettlebell exercises. Uh, that is it for our video. There were a couple of exercises that I liked and a couple that I did not like. Well, one in particular that I was not a fan of. But the other ones I think are fine to include in your strength training routine. Some of the exercises I would only include if you've had previous experience with kettlebells, such as the one that Michael Chandler was performing, while others 
for example, the one Dustin Poirier was performing or Cody Garbrandt's exercise, I think are fine to include if you are new to kettlebells and have somebody uh, looking on that can give you some feedback in terms of what you're doing. Overall, kettlebells, as always, an excellent choice for you to develop your performance when it comes to combat sports, when it comes to mixed martial arts or jujitsu. And this is why we see so many professional athletes utilizing them in their strength training routine. There's just so much value to this one implement that it would be foolish not to include it in your strength training. So with that being said, if you have not done so already, make sure you head over to MomentumOne.com slash join dash now. We have a free seven day trial. That's right, free, no money, no credit card required, where you can take advantage of all of our premium training assets, over 200 workouts, beginner workouts, kettlebell instruction, and premium content, which you can have at your fingertips with a click of a button. I have the link in the description below. Make sure you check that out so you can start your kettlebell training journey today. Additionally, if you have found value in the things that I've had to say today, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. You owe it to yourself. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you want to hear me talk about next in the comments below. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today. I have enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully you have too. Hopefully you've gotten a good laugh out of it. Hopefully you've learned some new things. Hopefully you pick up a kettlebell and you start using it for your strength training at home. Until next time, I am Dr. Brandon Osborne from Momentum Live. I will see you then. It's been a pleasure.